Frogs and toads are my favorite animals on the planet, but they're in trouble. So I decided to dedicate a YouTube channel focusing on the conservation of these animals. I'll present to you the educational and entertaining aspects of their lives. Well guys, we delivered on the promise that we were going to find the great tree frog. Frog Week is dedicated to the animals of the Northeast and their story. This is my conservation efforts. Welcome to Frog Week. This is always my favorite time of the year because it's the American toad breeding season and we get a chance to see all of the toads come from the forest, whether they're in the vernal pools where we're filming or at our backyard pond. It's always sure to be a great time. It's always fun to see American toads floating on the surface of the water because they're mostly known to avoid it, not to go into deep water. But here we see during the breeding season, it doesn't seem to phase these toads. The toads that have the loudest and best sounding calls will draw the females to the vernal pools. However, the toads that are not calling are waiting to pounce on unsuspecting females as they are satellites and they're waiting for their chance to grab a female to further their genes for the next generation. I haven't got that far yet. I'm watching a female carry a toad. Are they? It's a beautiful shot. It's a really good shot. That was a heck of a shot. You see that? The toad? Yeah. So keep your light on it real quick. I want to see if this toad's going to catch a spider. I got to do a lot tonight. Take the water temperature. So we're out here at a very special location and we've been here for a couple of years now and what I'm holding in my hand is the Eastern Newt. It goes by a couple names, the Red Spotted Newt. Uh, this is an adult and it's come here not just to mate, but these animals are also, uh, I would classify them almost as the hyena of all of the vernal pool inhabitants because these guys are here for a buffet. You can hear the toads calling all around us. And the most exciting thing that I can tell you, but it's also not good, is that these newts can't wait for these toads to find a mate because these are the eggs that are gonna feed these newts. And in turn, it's also gonna create even more newts. So these guys here are kind of crashing the toad party that we're also crashing. They're circling around the breeding toads in the water and we got them earlier in the year consuming wood frog eggs like literally the egg, the larva inside the egg, they were eating it right out. So they're gonna do the same thing for the toads as well. So I just wanted to showcase an animal and I've, I've worked with them since I was a little kid. I have no hard feelings towards them, but they could also be very destructive in environments because they could dominate the ecosystem if they consume all of the eggs. So while this is a cute little newt, 
It's also very important to realize that it's significant in vernal pool reproduction. Or knowingly, are going to breed and feed the newt, but also carry on the genes for the next generation of American toads. What a wild night. We could hear the American toads calling. So many choruses of American toads. But they're not the only one in this vernal pool having success tonight. We all, oh, they get quiet now and make me sound like I'm yelling. Uh, we also have the spotted salamander, which is one of the common and most beloved amphibians in the state. People enjoy seeing these because they're always smiling, they always look happy, and they really can't get away from you. But one of the most important things to understand about the spotted salamander is their population, although it's abundant, is very fragile. Because the spotted salamander is one of the very few amphibians that all of the inhabitants that were born in the vernal pool return. So if a vernal pool is gone, then they're out of luck, or they have to go to one very close. And in a forest where they're doing destruction for timber harvesting and a lot of other things, uh, these spotted salamanders are very fragile. This is only the second time that I've seen them and we're in the month of April. Usually spotted salamanders are breeding in late February and early March. So this is an anomaly year for these guys. And there are just as many spotted salamanders tonight as there are American toads. So it's truly incredible. Spotted salamanders are a cold loving amphibian. So it's truly incredible to see them. It's about 63 degrees out where we are. So the fact that this guy here, this girl here, we, Tyler believes this to be a female, um, the fact that they're out now is truly unbelievable. We had no idea that they would be out in congresses like this uh, for so long, late into the spring. That's a toad in the wood frog eggs. Really interesting spot to be. I heard that. That was a toad fort. Them, like fighting? Yeah. Yes. I think they're down in the forest where we normally go. Yes. The most fascinating thing is seeing American toads and spotted salamanders together because this is not normal for uh, Western PA, at least for where we're at. For the most part, spotted salamanders come out early, very early. What haven't we seen yet that you want to see? The wood frog. Or if we find any, it'll be a record. Earliest? Well, just that they're in the county. They're in the county, but nobody's documented them yet. Cambria. Right. We're going to try and do that for frog week. Doing nature walks and conservation projects is what Frog Week is all about. Here we had a chance to see one of the first nature walks of the year. Whenever I was taking the tadpoles and the egg clutches and I was moving them to a different place. You could see the excitement and also the group around me eager to learn about the environment that these animals live in. These are some of the best moments of Frog Week because we get to share them with others. Acidic water, and they have a high tolerance of it. So you so can see the tadpoles. Them, you're moving them because of um, theirs could dry up. Yeah, I think they will. Oh. I think that they will dry up.
everything looked like it was going to be great. The American toads were just starting the breeding season. Most of them had mated. And then we had the most unexpected thing. We had a snowstorm in the middle of the breeding season. That's a couple inches right there. Look at that guys. It's April 21st. I'm in the car here. Let me just, there's nobody behind me so we don't have to worry, but look at this. Isn't this crazy? Look at this. We're in an area where there's a forest. Obviously these are pines. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty dense in there, but there's snow. There's snow land, April 21st. This is after all the frogs have made it. Like we still have snow, we're still battling the winter. It just won't give up. I mean, literally, we've had days in the 30s consecutively. It's been really rough. If you're an amphibian or a reptile, this is not the kind of weather that you want. This is what the Pennsylvania forests sound like in the spring. We have spring peepers in large choruses, and we have the coyotes ominously calling from the distance. And the interesting thing is, you know, the vernal pools, I have so many clips of the vernal pools rising and falling, and it was like, that was gonna, it was, it was about to be it. Like, the very last pieces of the vernal pool that were left, the deep sections, were starting to finally lose their water. And I'm thinking, man, like, around July is whenever this normally happened. So, I'd been out here and I'd been uh, getting my feet wet so to speak in catching all of the tadpoles that I could and I was moving them from these vernal pools that were drying up or that had dried up and putting them in different places well we got one heavy rainstorm and this was yesterday and it's just so unbelievable what happened with um, the way things have gone uh, this year has been such a roller coaster for frogs and toads because one minute it's snowing and it's cold and the next minute the vernal pools are drying up because it's like 85 degree heat. Um, just unbelievable. And the crazy part about this, I'm literally looking where this water is and my footprints are all throughout this vernal pool now because I figured it was done. So I'm happy though. I'm happy that I was wrong. I hope that this fills up and it gets back to its glory and I hope we have a rainy summer. Um, a lot of the areas with the vernal pools, sadly, toad tadpoles, wood frogs, maybe some gray tree frogs in some instances, spring peepers and spotted salamanders, they lost out on a lot of their population because the vernal pools had to have dried up in some of the locations we go to. Now, with that being said, that doesn't mean, for one, that they can't come back, and also for the summertime breeders. So, anyway, Hopefully it's a productive summer for frogs and toads. So we can see there's a ton of stuff going on here. It's a pretty active vernal pool. You can see how the female is so stretched out. Um, if you follow her string here, this is all from the same female. You can see it. So she looks pretty exhausted, and I can understand. So we have that one, and then we have this one. So we have four couples in here mating. These are the ones that didn't breed. And we have about two male stragglers. You can see this is the last hope that this toad has to breed, this one without the female. I'll show you guys a bigger perspective of what's going to happen here with this specific part of the vernal pool in a moment. But you can see how the female is just trying to lay the eggs. Uh, I think he's already lost, but he doesn't realize it yet. But all he could really do is keep fighting. But 
he's getting ready to make the eggs uh, fertilized with his sperm and you can see this it's the last effort he has this toad specifically I don't know if he's gonna try a group fertilization which is possible sometimes that happens hopefully they get their wish and they get a little bit of luck here because it has not been lucky I have something super I have something here super duper incredible the male toad that you see on top of the other one wrestled him off now we have a female who probably was releasing eggs that doesn't have a male on top so the question is because she's under the leaf and I can't see I'm not going to disturb is she still depositing eggs or has she stopped and is she waiting for a male to suit her boy we got a little bit of action here because everybody else has a partner these two are just competing for the last chair like it were musical chairs and she's sitting there waiting and they're gonna be able to take cover from the rain while these three wait in limbo We've got two female toads here that are poised here in this standing position to start reproducing and start laying their eggs. So these two couples are going to breed successfully for the second time this year. Now it's not, it's not completely far-fetched to say it could be the first time, but it's highly unlikely because of how late we are in the season. And the weather that we've gotten is more like uh, the peak of their breeding season. So. It's more likely that this is the second time. Just truly incredible to see here. As you can tell, we've got spring peepers and we've got American toads still at the breeding ground. We see wood frogs out tonight, but they're not mating. It was finally time to return home and see what was happening to our pond. Just like we witnessed from the last location, the American toads were still at it breeding. As you can see, this pair was getting ready and getting into position to soon mate. Finally get a chance to see the American toad that was in the introduction. He's the most notorious and infamous toad that we've had at the pond for the last two or three years. He was actually a road rescue that we brought to the pond and he's been back ever since. And not only has he been calling, but he's also been displaying his alpha behavior. And he has been the dominant toad breeding three times this year. But you'll see that coming up. I don't know where they're gonna mate, but hopefully they all stick around. 
For around a decade, the American toads in my neighborhood had been on the decline, so whenever we started Frog Week, it was a personal goal to always increase and enhance the toad population specifically. So seeing them gathered around the pond and the vernal pool that I created is one of the most exciting and truly incredible accomplishments that I was able to accomplish for Frog Week. This American Toad documentary is unlike anything that you've ever seen before because it highlights the resiliency of the American Toads in these ridges, how they were able to battle a snowstorm in the middle of the breeding season, and how they were able to thrive during one of the most unprecedented heat waves in the spring. Not only that, but they were able to come back for round two and reproduce. American toads are my favorite animals and I'm so glad I get the opportunity to do conservation work with them and share these projects with you. And once again, just for a little easter egg, here is that dominant infamous American toad breeding for the third time in the breeding season. This was truly a spring season unlike any other and deserved to be captured in a documentary highlighting these American toads and their story of resiliency on how they survive. Thank you for watching this episode. I hope that you'll like toads a little bit more and we will see you in the next one. If you like the content, please think about subscribing and sharing it with your friends. We'll see you in the next one. In loving memory of Siebert the Wild American Toad, after the breeding season, an unfortunate accident happened in a neighbor's yard and he was unable to survive, but he'll always live on with this documentary being made in his memory.